But it does seem like there's been a concerted campaign in the newspapers about huge public support for the right to die. This is a picture of the Times from Saturday, and there you'll see on the front page, huge public support for the right to die. It says, overwhelming public support for a change in the law to allow medically assisted suicide is revealed in a poll in the Times. And I couldn't believe the facts, but it says that three quarters, 74% of people want doctors to be allowed to help terminally ill patients to end their lives. And support is particularly strong amongst those aged 55 to 64. And it goes on and talks about the fact that uh, the Royal College of Nurses has now dropped its opposition to assisted suicide. And it seems to me that there's a concerted campaign to make us all believe that it's all right. And my personal view is that the church seems to be asleep to the dangers of it. And so um, tonight we want to introduce the subject. And then tomorrow afternoon, Simon's going to be um, hosting a big debate that's going to take place on Genesis TV concerning uh, a number of the current moral issues that are facing uh, the nation. But on the line to us now is Professor William Wagner. And Professor William Wagner is seconded to this country to the work of Christian Concern for Our Nation. Um, he is a, um, a, a professor at a law uh, college in Michigan, where he lectures in ethics and uh, uh, constitution. And uh, good evening to you, Professor. I can good see evening, you there. Gordon. Thanks How are so you much. Tonight? I'm all right, thank you. J tell us, what are you doing in this country? Because home is, is America, as people will immediately tell by your accent. Yes. Well, home may be American, but we are all Christians. Mm -hmm. And as brothers and sisters uh, in Christ, we have a heart for what is happening uh, to our other brothers and sisters around the world. And as part of uh, my service and as part of my research, uh, I am very interested in the protection of uh, the free exercise of religious conscience, uh, the free exercise of speech, uh, and uh, the protection of uh, human life and the sanctity of human life and the fundamental uh, right uh, to protect that life. And what I tend to do from time to time is I look around the world when I have time, uh, and I happen to be on sabbatical doing research here uh, at this time and, and working uh, with this amazing organization, Christian Concern for Our Nation. Uh, and, and I look around the world and I see where uh, is the next country that is on the precipice. And uh, much to my surprise, I, I saw it was, um, it was the United Kingdom with uh, issues such as the Coroner's and Justice Bill and, and issues of life and uh, other issues that uh, are not part of your program tonight but are, are just as important, uh, the free exercise of conscience and free speech for Christians. Uh, they're at risk here probably, uh, or, or were when I came over here, almost um, as much as anywhere uh, in the world. And it is wonderful to see uh, Christians uh, such as uh, at Christian Concern for Our Nation uh, standing up and speaking truth and taking these messages to the church and and, and then seeing the pastors. Professor uh, Wagner, can I, can I interrupt you a moment? Yes, with, with everything that's in the newspapers, people mightn't be sure where the law stands at this moment of time as far as what we call assisted dying is concerned. Can you tell us what the law actually states? Well, the, the law right now uh, in the United Kingdom uh, prohibits uh, killing, prohibits assisted suicide. Uh, and prohibits a person from assisting another person in killing themselves. Uh, that law uh, reflects a moral standard. Uh, that law includes a moral element uh, that says human life has value. Human life has positive value. God created uh, that life. Uh, he created it in his image. He gives us purpose. There, there is a purpose that we are brought into this world and that we are created, and God tells us that, that we have a purpose. Now, the law in the United Kingdom, uh, for hundreds of years, uh, from the common law and then through uh, statutory law, uh, excuse me there for a second, we had uh, the cleaners come in, they weren't that's expecting an quite, interview. That's, that's quite out. all right in the middle of the, the program, uh, we don't mind, you carry right. on. But you, you were just saying that the law of this country... But the law of this country, yeah, it reflects that standard, that, that it is wrong to, to, to kill, it is wrong to take human life. 
But when people read things like the, the newspaper in the Times, and it almost seems like uh, every few days there's a drip feed of an article, and now we're told 74% of people think it would be all right for doctors to, to give some advice. From a Christian perspective, what are the things that we should be standing on at this moment of time? Well, we start by standing on truth, of course. And I'm not sure that it is true that 75% of this country believe that the most vulnerable, uh, at the most vulnerable stages of their life, should not be protected. And I suppose when you uh, do a poll and you do a statistic, uh, you can phrase a question in any number of ways to, to get the answer that, that you want. Uh, now, if Christians are informed and Christians stand on the truth that all life uh, created by God uh, is sacred and therefore deserves the protection of the government, uh, then the question is how do we present this message uh, to the world, perhaps to um, brothers and sisters in Christ who uh, may have not thought out how to respond to this issue, or perhaps even to non-Christians uh, who understand that the most vulnerable, the old and the aged, you know, if we don't protect those lives, uh, there will be a frightening duty to die. And for you, let me give you an example. Uh, in, from my country, in the state of Oregon, uh, a government out on the west side of uh, the country, they legalized assisted killing. Now, what immediately happened after that, within the first couple of years, was this frightening duty to die, because now all of a sudden it was legal, and so grandpa and grandfather and grandpapa did not you know, feel that they should be a burden anymore when they began to get sick. And, and so um, they did polls, and, and they showed that there is this frightening duty to die uh, that comes with uh, legalization. Now, that frightening duty to die is placed on the most vulnerable in our society. Uh, does their life not have value that the government should protect? I say it does, and I, and I think most uh, citizens in the United Kingdom would say it does. Thank you. Professor Wagner, supposing our, our viewers tonight are, are having a cup of coffee tomorrow in the middle of the morning at, at work, or they're standing in the queue at the bakeries, and uh, somebody begins to talk about the issue of, of euthanasia, assisted dying, and says, well, you know, you're, you're out of step with public opinion now. Look, even the nurses are, are neutral on the issue uh, now. What, in, in earthly terms, how should they explain where they stand as Christians? Uh, in earthly terms, I would respond that uh, the nurses did not, number one, uh, endorse assisted suicide, and number two, the British Medical Association, from what I understand, opposes it. The American Medical Association and other medical uh, associations of the world strongly oppose it, and, and I guess what I would do is I would uh, perhaps go on Google and I would print out a copy of the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, the Hippocratic Oath that tells the doctor and that tells the nurse just exactly what their moral duty is. Uh, and their moral duty is to preserve life and to be a physician and protect life, not to take life. And so the Hippocratic Oath specifically prohibits a doctor from assisting another person in taking their life. Now, it is a, a scary, scary thing for a nation if its citizens remove the moral element of the law. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you asked, uh, how do we respond to someone who is not a Christian? Well, I think the answer to that is, is that you can ask them, is should the law include a moral element? You know, should there be moral reference points uh, of, that we look to? Now, you don't have to uh, read a law uh, and look in a statute book to know that stealing is wrong. Uh, you likewise don't have to uh, look into a statute book to realize that the taking of human life is wrong. Now, when Nazi Germany removed that element of the law. Uh, most of the world is aware of the atrocities that resulted in, uh, ultimately resulted in the Holocaust. 
What most of the world does not know, though, is that prior to the Holocaust, tens of thousands of Germans were convinced by their government to bring their own children, their German children, into euthanasia centers um, and have them euthanized if their hand, perhaps. I had a grandmother uh, tell me about her grandson who was brought in by her father and euthanized because he had a deformed finger and he wasn't perfect. And so once Germany at that time was able to remove the moral element of law, and that moral reference point that all life has value, it was much easier to take other lives in other situations because there was no moral point reference point against which to measure. When God ceases to be uh, the moral reference point, then man will replace that uh, moral reference point with a point uh, decided by whoever happens to be in power at the time. Professor Wagner, it's fascinating to talk to you. I want to say thank you for giving up part of your evening tonight to do that.